Hello, this is CC Kim. And this is Jim Bacho. And this is Movies About Music. Movies About Music. That's our podcast. Yes. So what are we going to talk about in our podcast? Um, we are going to talk about movies about music, but I think it's very important to make the distinction of um, what constitutes as movies about music, specifically okay. in this context. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Why don't you let our listeners know? Yes. So we're talking about movies that have music as the, the central driving force, right? So it's not musicians. It's not musicals. They're not documentaries either. We're not going to be do doing documentaries. We're not going to be doing musicals. Like, what's a good example? Well, so I think it's a movie that has music that's central to the narrative. Yes, yes. That's a better way to put it. So it would be, I guess we can just announce what the first mm -hmm. one is that we're mm -hmm. going to do, which is Sound of Metal. Yes. So this would be a movie, a narrative film mm -hmm. with music at the core of the story and the events. Yes. And we don't know how many movies like this there are. Yeah, we but we tried going through some of them that we want to cover and there were quite a that there were a lot. Yeah, I think we came up with yeah. about 10 movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've and, got a little list in our head. Right. In our heads. And why are we doing this specifically? Why does this podcast need to exist? Well, I think there's a niche, a niche, a mm -hmm. niche, a niche, a niche. I would say niche. A but, niche. There's yeah. a there's a niche for this. There's nobody else doing mm -hmm. this that I know of. Mm -hmm. But I also think it it's something that we talked about that speaks to our shared backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Right. Um, so I, it just tickles me to say this every time I say it because I probably have some major imposter syndrome issues about being a professional voiceover artist, which is what I do most of the time. I also record background music for uh, TV commercials, uh, video games, and other, you know, just background music. Uh, I do vocals and I write. Um, and that is my entire existence. That is my day job. And um, I also try to be a singer-songwriter. I have a couple of albums out, and uh, I have also been a jazz singer for most of my adult life. And um, how about you, Jim? Well, first, I think you're being a little humble there. Hmm. You're, you're quite the singer. And, <laughs> and you've played in bands, and you've made albums, and you there's a particular YouTube clip out there with you with something like 4 million views. Um, right, there's actually one um, with 100 million views as really? well. But I was only, but you know, the views have nothing to do with my involvement. Oh, them. come on. So I, I never say this to people because it has nothing to do. It's just, you know, commercial ads get these views anyway, especially if it's a global commercial. I guess the fact that I got chosen to do the vocals for these commercials that went global and viral may say, say something, but it's... A lot of it is just being at the right place at the right time and just being available, <laughs> being well, the cheapest is, person to do. That is certainly <laughs> humble. But but you also have, like, you have a lot of views on music and the music industry because of your experience, and it has some overlaps with the cultural issues that get woven into these kind of films, so there's that as well. Right. That That is indeed true, and I've been exposed to um, a lot of people who really are central to the industry, to the music industry in a lot of capacities. And that's something that you and I both have in common, because you were also a professional musician. You were a touring drummer, and um, you've recorded. You've also been a sound engineer, and you've interviewed some big names. Yeah, that's and you've, true. Yeah, the, some really insanely big names. Yeah. And I think you have definitely have expertise in both music and film. Right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, I teach filmmaking mm -hmm. um, as my profession. Um, so I have taught at universities um, teaching how to make films and how to theorize about films. I've done that for years. I taught in Korea. I taught in China. I taught in Taiwan. 
in addition to that, I do a lot of writing about film. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of published essays on film, mostly about film theory and film philosophy. And I also do a lot of philosophical work. So I do a lot of reading and writing about philosophy and it overlaps with film. So it's, I think it's kind of interesting, our shared interests, you Mm -hmm. know, in a lot of these things. In terms of doing this podcast, you know, I I will probably handle a lot of the theoretical elements and the philosophical elements, Mm -hmm. whereas I expect that you would handle a lot of the cultural and just the experience of music and and sort of your critique as a musician. But of course, we're going to overlap and it's just going to be a free form Mm -hmm. kind of thing that Mm -hmm. we're going to have fun with. Mm -hmm. And your background, would you say that your background is more film or music or sound or all of the above? Mm, That's interesting because professionally, it's more in the area of film and philosophy. But in terms of experience, Mm -hmm. uh, I've had more experience doing music and playing music that's and, right yeah because yeah. i met you in a music context right like in a jam in a jam session and you mm-hmm. were mostly talking about music i still see you as more of a musician what was your phd and i totally forget everything. it was in philosophy <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so specifically like yeah but i i yeah. did it but my dissertation was about film it was mm-hmm. about uh the films of terence malick that's right unseeing yeah. cinema and then there, yeah. you also explore the sound aspect of film right sound right. is an area that i'm right yeah so so it's kind of this overlap of music sound mm-hmm. film philosophy for me mm-hmm. yeah and why is this something important to you like this podcast why should this podcast exist do you think? Well, I think I think the interesting thing to me about it is again the crossover of our of you and me. Mm-hmm. I guess we should tell people mm-hmm. our relationship. Right. Um, we're married to each other. Yeah. Mm. Not to other people. <laughs> to each other. Right. And, uh, exclusively to each other. Exclusively yeah. to each other. That's true. <laughs> this is not a polygamous situation no. at all. No. Um, and so that explains why we spend a lot of time together, I guess. And we well, yeah. Just... And it, there's a pande- there's a global pandemic going on and yes. we can't go out and we can't play music. Right. And this is, we're in September, 2021. Correct. And, uh, we're based in Seoul, South Korea, and right now Asia is in a weird in-between place where we never really opened up after the pandemic started, right? We've never been fully open. We've just been going back and forth with restrictions. And, uh, you know, the restrictions vary from, like, lenient to severe. But we've, we haven't we have had the chance yet to really commune, play music, or, you know, Uh, see really live shows like we haven't I mean we were so you were just teaching in Taiwan Mm -hmm. where they managed to keep the virus out successfully for for a while for a while until they did it until they didn't right but then a couple of pilots (laughs) kind of messed that up (laughs) but we saw some live shows um, we did we were there we were there at a certain Mm -hmm. at a at at a time right before that outbreak happened where we were able to go out and see live music and this was what April of Mm -hmm. this year Mm -hmm. So, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit Mm -hmm. Taiwan Mm -hmm. while you were there. Right. So do you think, are you trying to say that movies about music have a special place in, during this pandemic because we can't go out to see live shows and to experience the concerts and whatnot? I think so. I I think that we're kind of supplementing our Mm -hmm. desire to play into these movies that we're watching and trying to gain enjoyment from that. And Mm -hmm. hopefully we're able to communicate our feelings about some of these movies about music that are very popular, I think, that Mm -hmm. people enjoy. And Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, just like a lot of film theory or film philosophy, Mm -hmm. we we try to think through what these films are doing. And I think one of the things that I think we're both interested in in, is this idea of authenticity. Right. Yeah, this is huge for both of us. Have you seen that ABBA is coming back after 40 years? I did. Does this have anything to do with our podcast? Yes. (laughs) Like if you, if you tried listening to, you know, what I, what I say. Okay. um, the floor is yours right <laughs> you will often find that there is something to it <laughs> go okay um so they put out an album and, and a music video and what they did was i guess they with digital manipulation they made the members look like they did in the 70s so they're all over 70 
years old, but they were digitalized to look like they were in their 30s which is how old they were. Well, I, I imagine they were that old in the 70s. They were probably in the 30s, right? Mm -hmm. And that is happening a lot in the industry. I know for a fact that these digital concerts, these online concerts, and these holograms, whatever. I recently was in a... I worked for an event that involved BTS. They're doing so many of these weird virtual concerts they actually did a concert in the multiverse or oh god yeah and and it's actually becoming more and more it's yeah it's frequently done now and so i had a horrible thought today which was are these concerts going to be live concerts and the existence of this musician right and part of the fun and i don't know for me personally is to you know how musicians can be really flaky and they can be super weird on stage? Yes. Famous me. I went to a Keith Jarrett show where he freaked out. Well, he freaks out anyway. All the when time. It's part of his, thing, his thing, right? Thing, yeah. And you know, like Lauren Hill is known to be late for every single show that mm -hmm. she does. And there are all these things that you experience in a live situation. Is that going to be a thing of the past? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> because you were asking me if BTS actually exists. <laughs> yeah, so CC had the privilege of doing this thing with BTS. It was a thing. I can't even call it it. Right, because I don't, I don't even... know what happened. Exactly. But she had a BTS experience as, uh, for one of her clients. I think I should. I, I think I should clarify because um, a lot of people care about BTS. I doubt oh, yeah. our listeners would, but. I, a lot of people do. So just in case there's somebody out there who cares to hear about this. Oh, I think we can get the BTS fans. Yeah. But, we shouldn't exclude the BTS right, fans right, right. in, in right. movies about music. Right. That's true. That's very true. They were doing, basically it was like a, a collaboration with a very famous video game that I will not mention here because it's not out yet. Um, well, the video game itself is out. It's the most downloaded game in the world. Can you lose your kneecaps by even mentioning this right now? No, I just signed an NDA. That's why. Okay. I don't want to get sued by a conglomerate. Right. So it's just about specifics. <laughs> right. Although nobody's listening to this. You know? <laughs> See, now you can't, you can't right. say that. Okay. You never know. Right. Exactly. So anyway, it was a filmed event of them doing gameplay. So they were playing the games live. So you know how on YouTube they do gameplay all the time? Yeah. Very um, famous in Korea, actually. Yes, yes. And sometimes that's the only way I can listen to some of my acting work. So I watch some of my own, you know, some the games that I've been involved in um, just to hear what I sound like. <laughs> um, that's how I found out what that was. But the BTS was doing it. And they were playing with real people, I think. Not in this in the shoot but i think they when they do play they peel, play with real people who don't realize who they are right so you can have a separate identity in this game and uh you wanted to know if they were actually real because yeah. they their, their popularity blew up during the pandemic right right and so well before before then they they were they big. were very very big but then i think they really blew up during the pandemic right when you said find out if they're actually real yeah I wanted to know if they were actually real. <laughs> that was funny, but at the same time, a little scary because it, it's a possibility now to invent. Right. I see where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Back to ABBA. Yeah. It's, it's a possibility now to digitally, to have people who don't exist. Like, you know, these musicians might not exist. So is the traditional rock star a thing of the past? And that's right. a horrible thought because I love them. I do too. I I think it's safe to say that you and I are both passionate about live mm -hmm. music, real music, people playing instruments, mm -hmm. and people feeling the spirit of music mm -hmm. with each other mm -hmm. in community. And mm -hmm. with a community of an audience is something that's been lacking during this time, right. and it's something that we hunger to have back. On that note, I'd like to say that this podcast, for me, would be about musicians and their lives and how they interact with the world. I like it. I think maybe that's why we're watching, we want to watch these movies about musicians and how they used to play music and record music. Um, I remember watching Bohemian Rhapsody 
and they were recording with the tape and they had to read the, the stack the harmonies in bohemian rhapsody with the fucking tape yeah and every time they they were in there for hours and it was just like that I see a silhouette of a man on a horse. Scaramouche, scaramouche. Do you do the fandango? And then that like thunderbolts of lightning, really, really frightening. Me. And Go he to had the... to hit that really yeah, high note. Exactly. And then you don't know if you're, there was no auto tune. Right. Right. He fucking had to hit that note. Right. And everybody had to like sweat through it. And that's what makes these movies interesting. Mm-hmm. And these stories so interesting. Mm-hmm. There's something, there's a soul behind the music. Right. Freddie Mercury was like he was such a soul you know right and a lot of these musicians were and i'm scared that that might be a thing of the past right so i think you're hitting on sort of the Mm -hmm. larger thing that i think is something that we can do while we're doing this podcast Mm -hmm. is we are in a pandemic era Mm -hmm. um, and it's very difficult there's a lot of artists out there who are genuinely suffering Right. And not being able to do their art and do their work. And this is, you know, sort of the vibrancy of culture. Mm-hmm. And this isn't getting to be experienced right now. And so, you know, by by exploring these movies, I'm sure we're going to get into conversations about what's happening, you know, today and, mm-hmm. and kind of remind people of what it's like or to sort of, you know, just show people what it's like mm-hmm. to, you know, live this experience. And hopefully when we get back to being able to go out and play music mm-hmm. again, this can kind of lead us back into what's important, I hope. Yeah, I'm pretty optimistic about it. I am too. The I mean, ABBA eventually. thing freaked me out. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that's, that either. That's not, that, that to me is sort of fulfilling the nostalgic itch, mm-hmm. but it's not authentic, I don't think. The ABBA and the BTS hologram concert that happened a month ago kind of freaked me out but but yeah. bts is real they're very real okay well that's good to know yeah i saw them up close they yawn and they you sure that's not programmed into their automatronic matrix i mean i wouldn't know because i also wasn't allowed too near them like they had a lot of body cards <laughs> but they looked real yeah okay good all right so uh, maybe we can wrap it up there yes. this is our little introduction to our podcast mm-hmm. and we invite you to join us for our first film which mm-hmm. will be Sound of Metal, Mm -hmm. which neither of us have seen. So we're very excited Mm -hmm. about this. And thanks for listening, and we hope you tune in next time. Yay! Under the moonlight I'll sing you a song So you'd magically feel a love that's alone Hopefully they'll live eternally If we paint ourselves all bright with stories Of heroes and poets and sadness and war Of immeasurable pain, unconditional love Movies about music